And so we continue with this nonsensical documentary uh, produced and directed by Herzog. Herzog being a nice young woman, very nice, and she'll probably make something substantial out of this. I, Herman Scuttle, the prisoner, I don't have any confidence in myself, um, not only in this film project, documentary project, but uh, in just about every other phase of my life. It hasn't always been that way, but I, I'm losing something lately. I think it's age. It's definitely age. Well, um, Ms. Herzog, uh, if you're there, uh, okay, I see you. We'll start this one, okay. First anecdote I'll bring to you is, uh, well, it's about what else? The meaning of love. If you're going to uh, have a documentary about me or anybody, I think, in my mind, you should start with the meaning of love. Why not? That's a great way to be. So, um, in my little world, I can tell you about uh, the meaning of love. Uh, before I came to the prison, I lived in this really crappy uh, rooming house. There were 14 of us, 14 of us, and, uh, well, I devoted my time. I didn't hang out with these people. I kept to myself. And I just uh, dedicated every day to um, the meaning of love. I always had the meaning of love right nearby in my file cabinet. Yeah. I had hard copy of the meaning of love, oh, pages and pages in folders, fused with the essence of truth and trust. Did you hear me say that? Truth and trust? Yes, yeah, because you, there's no way you can get to the meaning of love without truth and trust. That's the truth. Trust me. Well, so uh, rooming house, awful, awful, lousy rooming house that I lived in. Uh, in that population, in that low-life rooming house, these other uh, tenants there, they were, uh, I'll be kind, okay? I'll be kind, and I don't know where this documentary is going to be distributed, so I'll say it in the nicest way possible, okay, without saying any dirty words. These other people in this low-life rooming house, they were heartless swine. Heartless swine. And that's being nice. And what did they do? What did they do? They would stampede through the door of my room. They would forage through my room. And uh, this would happen every time I went down the hall to the WC. You know what a WC is. That's the loo. You know what a loo is, don't you? That's the bathroom. Fourteen people in this rooming house, including me, and only one bathroom. So when I went down there to do my thing, these, uh, these heartless swine, uh, they would, uh, well, each one of these heartless swine, let's, let's get it straight. They were um, anonymous miscarriages of evolution. Again, I'm being kind. And they would smash and grab while I was in the hallway taking a shower. They would loot into my uh, cubicle, looting, thundering away with my watch and my peanut butter and my file on the meaning of love. Mm -hmm. They pawned my watch, they inhaled the peanut butter, and they just cavalierly burned all of my paperwork. Now, you these, these types of people in that rooming house, they can't be held accountable. Oh, no. 
They can do anything they want. Like I described and worse. You know why? Because the law of the land protects this breed of louts. As they nip at the sanctuary of the government breast. Okay. Now, I... Um, I had a lot of uh, nasty things going through my head at that time when I found out what they did. I had a lot of violence going through my brain, but I, I suspended revenge. See, that's the kind of guy I am. I didn't just jump back at them and start, start a fight or what. I suspended my revenge and kept late hours outlining the essence of truth and trust and began crafting a new edition of the meaning of love. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Now, I am still working on the meaning of love here in the prison after all these years, and I'm this close to finishing up. And when I finish up, I'm going to go back to that rooming house and I'm going to set it on fire. Uh, Herzog, yeah, did you like that one? Was it okay? Well, okay, well, do with it what you want in your documentary, so. Um, the next thing I can uh, add to this mess is, um, is something for people who are punctilious. Punctilious! Oh, so you haven't heard of that word before? Punctilious means meticulous, a perfectionist, fussy, finicky, really strict, really rigid, that's, that's a punctilious person. Now, not everybody is like that, but there are enough punctilious people out there for me to, to pass along my observation. Okay? You punctilious folks, you uh, leap out of bed first thing in the morning and you're primed to seize the day. Right? Okay. And you have a burning desire to give up a bad habit. That's okay. Nothing wrong with that. But there is one problem with the punctilious people. Uh, you're fresh out of bad habits. See? You wake up with a burning desire to give up a bad habit, but you're fresh out of bad habits. You've been, marvelous, you've been marvelously successful. Hang on a second. I need another drink of coffee. You, punctilious person, you've been marvelously successful at quitting smoking, drinking. Oh, uh, you've been the same way with experimenting with hallucinogens. You quit all them and, and you, you never look back, which is good. And you even swore off meat last year along with junk food and TV. Hooray for you. Very good. Very good. And if that's not enough, you even made a pledge to yourself to never fall in love again. Aha! See, now you, you, you should win some kind of prize for that. So, um, we get back to you, Mr. and Mrs., or Miss, Ms., whoever you are, punctilious person. You, uh, you're brimming with zealotry first thing in the morning. You're ready to enter, enter into a fervent abstinence uh, of something, anything. You see, you see what's happening? You become so cleansed and pure that nothing remains for you to swear off. That's your situation. 
So if you ask me, if you're in that situation where you uh, you want to you want to give up a bad habit first thing in the morning, but you've you haven't got any more bad habits. You're so pure, punctilious person. Here's what I say. I say, um, how about how about cutting back on being so punctilious? And what I mean by that is unbridle yourself. Backslide for a couple of hours. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, have, a, have an alcoholic drink and, a, and a, a smoke and eat some meat and uh, fall in love. For you, this would be backsliding. <laughs> but do it. Go ahead and, and, and see where it takes you. And I promise, you hear me? I promise that if you do that, no one will know the difference, least of all you. <laughs> um, yeah, oh no, I'm still with you. Uh, I'm still with you, uh, Herzog. Yeah, I just, I'm just trying to gather my thoughts and... Uh, I, um, you know what, can I, can I do a song now? I wrote a song last night. Can I do that? All right. I woke up this morning more confused than I ever been. I woke up this morning more confused than I ever been. I looked like my hat and my Gandhi, but I felt just like Ho Chi Minh. I woke up this morning a man put a gun to my head I woke up this morning a man put a gun to my head but he said I can't shoot you you smell like you're already dead I woke up this morning I said Mm, I better take a shower. I woke up this morning and I think I better take a shower. Yeah. I stink so bad the whole town smells sour. I woke up this morning no coffee in the coffee can. I woke up this morning, no coffee in the coffee can. I used yesterday's grounds from the garbage. You know I'm a recycling man. I woke up this morning more confused than I ever been. I woke up this morning more confused than I ever been. I looked like my hat, my Gandhi, but I felt just like Ho Chi Minh. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's my song, Herzog, and I'm sticking to it. Now then, uh, I can tell you, uh, oh you know that they let me, uh, they let me out of this prison whenever I want. They are so anxious to get rid of me. So they let me have like, well, in the, in, the, in the military, you would call it liberty, 
you know, you can go out on the town and be back by a certain curfew. Yeah. Well, I went down to this new um, Cumberland Farms. Right. And I just, oh, I just wanted to get a coffee. But the guy in front of me, you know, and when you go into a convenience store, wherever it is these days, you always wind up standing behind some knucklehead who's spending 15 minutes with the cashier there uh, with the scratch tickets. Oh, I'll take one of them and I'll take three of them. And, uh, oh, wait, no, that one over there I don't want. I want four of that one over there and um, six and, uh, and, and it, it's, it's just beyond, beyond insanity, scratch tickets. But there's always one in front of me, and, and there was on the time I'm talking about here. I'm at Cumberland Farms, a guy in front of me getting his scratch tickets, taking his damn time, you know, and wasting my time. And he's got a little kid next to him, a little boy. I would say the kid was about seven. I'm pretty good at guessing kids' ages. And um, he says, Daddy, can I have some chips? No. Uh, Daddy, can I have some candy? No. Well, Daddy, when we leave here at the store, can we go over to the, uh, the playground and play? No. We ain't doing nothing, and we ain't going nowhere, and you're not getting nothing to know. No, no. He says to his kid, getting his scratch tickets and talking to his kid this way. How do, you, how do you talk to your kid that way? Putting scratch tickets over your, uh, your family. Well, I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything, but I watched the guy, and he took his scratch tickets, and he went outside of the convenience store. He forgot to bring his son with him. Yeah, so. so he's out in front of the convenience store, leaning on the window, doing his scratch ticket thing, all of them losers, of course. Every scratch ticket was a loser. Meanwhile, his seven-year-old son is on the other side of the window, inside the store, looking out and hoping that uh, his, uh, his dad remembers what he forgot, namely the kid. Well, I got my coffee, and I went out, and I'm watching this guy with the scratch tickets, and I said... <clears throat> You know, because I noticed when I was behind him at the counter, I could see everything going on. And uh, I, I noticed that he spent a total of $50 on scratch tickets. 50 bucks on scratch tickets. Wouldn't buy any chips or candy for the kid, no. But $50 worth of scratch tickets, which turned out to be losers. I said to him, I said, hey, buddy, uh, how about if I even things up for you. He goes, you talking to me? And I said, yeah. I said, I'll tell you what. I'll give you $50 in cash right here, right now, if you take me and your son a half a block over to the uh, Pittsfield Commons to the playground. He just looks at me and he goes, get out of here, you pervert. So I just um, took out $50 cash out of my pocket, flashed it in front of him, and stuffed it in his shirt pocket. I said, here, take the money and do whatever you want with it. Now, I took a walk around the block. I sat on a stoop and drank my coffee, killed some time. And then I came back around that area, came to the Pittsfield Commons, and wouldn't you know, and wouldn't you know, there, the scratch ticket guy and the seven-year-old kid were having fun at the playground. They were laughing, and they were hopping on one leg, and they were freelancing, and they looked like a really good investment to me. And also, they looked undeniably like a father and son. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It turned out to be a good story, in other words. It doesn't always turn out that way, but this time, I like to, th I like to think that I had something to do with it. Uh, maybe, who knows? Good story, though, wasn't it? Good story, uh, Herzog, right? You weren't listening? <laughs> what were you doing? 
<clears throat> oh, you had your ear pods in and you were listening to something on your phone. Okay, that's okay. It was a good story, Herzog. You should listen more often. Oh, baby. Now, <clears throat> oh, oh, okay, hang on. Herzog, you want me to read this telegram? Well, I know it's a letter. I just want to be old school for the uh, documentary. Okay, I'll say, I have a, uh, a telegram here. Herzog has just given me a telegram. All right, let's see what it is. Is this legitimate? Did you screen this beforehand? You did, okay. To her, uh, sorry. To whom it concerns at the public access TV station. Please take that show off the air, that stupid show with the old jerk in the orange prison outfit. The show is offensive to all my sensibilities, especially offensive to my ability to suspend disbelief. The guy who pretends to be a prisoner is not a prisoner at all. He's just a third-rate actor uh, with too much time on his hands. I really, really hate this guy. What's his name? Herman Scudder, uh, Scuttle or Bob Balo? What's his name? But whatever he calls himself, I hate seeing him on my TV screen. I just plain despise him. He's old and ugly and stupid, and I usually throw a rock at my TV whenever his dumb, jerky show comes on. And right now, I have at least eight or nine smashed TVs in my home, all because of this idiot in the orange jumpsuit. How about getting rid of this bozo and opening up a spot on the TV schedule for a member of the community who has real talent, like maybe me, myself? How about giving me an audition? I have a great idea for a half-hour reality show about me living in a houseboat on Lake Mansfield with my 57 cats. Signed, Francine Gilgamesh, Great Barrington. Well, I'm going to save this letter. It's a, it's, a, it's a fan letter. I mean, how many fan letters does anybody get in their lives? Holy smoke. Um, so, Francine... Uh, oh, Francine, I, I'm sorry, uh, Herzog, Herzog, I'm sorry I called you that name, that's a name of somebody we don't know. Anyway, um, there was, uh, I don't know if I have time for this, Herzog, no, I don't. Herman, you have two minutes, so you've got to go back. All right, see, yeah. I kind of uh, intuitively knew that, uh, Herzog, so, but, um, um, yeah, look, I don't care if you, if you send a, a letter or a telegram like this crazy woman, it's, uh, I guess it's considered fun, it adds a little, little life to the documentary, um, so if you're watching this ridiculous, nonsensical, useless documentary um, and you feel an urge to write, well, just write to the whatever uh, television stations broadcast on. They usually have letters and graphics at the end of this thing. But in the meantime, um, I, uh, I'm going back. I get, I'm this close to finishing my, my uh, dissertation on the meaning of love. So I'm going back to, uh, to my cell now to work on that. <clears throat>